What's up, Weirdo Shade Tree Surgeon here. We're about to take off. We've been working hard. Uh, well, you know, I'll call it working hard. <laughs> we've been working hard. We've been having fun. We've been doing our thing. But let me tell you what right now. It's time for a little family vacation, baby. Vacation. We're going to hit the beach. We're going to hit the resort. We're going to have some fun. We're going to drink a lot. And you know, we always drink a lot. We always have fun. We always party. But uh, now we're just going to do it next to water. <laughs> Shade tree, everybody cries. What's it like to travel with so many beautiful, glamorous women? Just nothing. Number one, baby. <laughs> What's it like to travel with all these absolute beauties? Let me tell you what it's like to travel with them. It looks a lot like this, okay? <laughs> There's a, there's a reason I have the gold wing, okay? Where you know when you're taking a family vacation with all the with all the girls of Brap Star, it comes with a little bit of luggage. Are we ready to have a good time? Do you guys want to play any road games while we're on there? I spy out of state license plates. No, no, you just want to go get drunk. Okay, I'm on the gold wing. I'm in dad mode right now. Don't say I didn't try to make this road trip fun. Has everybody peed? <laughs> oh, you forgot. Of course you forgot your gloves. All right. Nope. I'm telling you right now. No pee breaks. We're going. No running out of gas either. We're going to have this vacation as a family. And everyone's going to have a good time. Or else. It'll probably be fine. Brap star family vacation right now. We got blonde, bratty, and loud next to me on the Harley Davidson. We got the goth princess back there on the black CBR. Dad Gene Supreme, baby shade tree surgeon on the mail order glide. Oh my God, dude. You gotta be kidding me. Well, we were gonna be on time. <laughs> Shay Lisa goes, yeah, I got plenty enough gas to get there. Literally on the highway for half a mile and the reserve comes on. What was that about? I have plenty enough gas to get there? Wow, well, I was really out of gas, huh? Hey, hey, at least I can also fill up my bike as well. Oh, wait, I filled up my bike before we left. Well, yeah, what kind of stuff? Does any of it look fun? Does it look like, uh, does it? <laughs> does, what does it look like? Does it look like confetti? <laughs> okay, can we go? Oh my gosh, dude. Everyone thinks it's so nice to hang out with these girls. Oh my god, bunch of freaking brats. My god, we're making horrible time. Freaking Shaylisi and Cammy Bay are gonna embarrass me in front of all the other dads. All right, all right, let's make some time, baby. <laughs> we're, we're heading out to the beach, St. Pete Beach, the white sands, the beautiful girls. We got tiki drinks, mahi mahi for dinner, baby. Nothing but zombies and Tahitian titty twisters all night long. That's funny, we rarely go out to the beach because I know like everyone is always just like, wow, Wow, Josh, you're drinking beer and motorcycles all the time. Like, yeah, I have a couple beers, but I try not to get too twisted out of shape. Now, when you're going to the beach, you got to make sure you have a plan because, believe it or not, it looks like Tampa's right on the water. It's not exactly right on the water. The beach is still about a 45 minute to an hour drive, depending on traffic. And if traffic's real bad, a couple hours. And you go out there, there's no good way to get out there. And you start getting all twisted out of shape on beers and Tahitian titty twisters out on the beach. And that's not something you want to ride home from. Oh, today we're doing it the responsible way. I mean, never completely responsible, but a little responsible. Reach the beach. Let's see if we can keep these two kids back there off their phones. Get them out and enjoy nature a little bit. Get off the screens. Enjoy the sunlight. These two brats back there are going to enjoy themselves on the beach, nature, and the great outdoors, whether they like it or not. You know, I guess I understand a little better when, I, you know, I almost never go and stay out at the beach. Only, I mean, like I said, like 40 minutes away, 30 minutes away with no traffic. And whenever I see, whenever I go somewhere like a cool motorcycle road like out to Eureka Springs or Oklahoma or in California all these places that we end up going to I always see in the comments someone's going like oh man I live like a half hour an hour and away from there I should go I've never been I'm like what how have you never been here it's so amazing well people travel from all over the country to go to St. Pete Beach it's literally one of the most famous beaches in the world <laughs> <laughs> so, and I live a half hour away and almost never go there. So I guess, you know, when somebody says that, I understand a little better now. Beefy boys. Oh, we got, uh, we got Shay with us. She's on a Harley. She can be our Harley backup. Oh, and we're here. Man, I really should come out here more. 
This is really gorgeous out here in St. Pete Beach. And yeah, it's touristy, but come on, baby. I don't mind a tourist trap. I don't even mind a tourist trap in my own home state, in my own hometown. You know, they're tourist traps for a reason, because hey, trap me. I'd like to have a good time. Oh my gosh. There's a bunch of dads out in the gold wings of the ocean out there. And you know, coming over this bridge into Boca Ciega Bay here in St. Pete Beach, looking at all these old hotels. By the way, this whole coastline was built on drugs, if anybody was wondering. That's, <laughs> that's where all these hotels came from. But man, this is just real old Florida beauty out here. And I imagine this is the same way people feel when they go into the mountains that are next to them that they rarely go to. I just come out here and I'm like, God damn, dude. This is just real Florida beauty in the beach, man. I really dig it. The Don Cesar, that's that big shell pink building right there. The Don Cesar is just such like a, like a classic St. Pete Beach Hotel. It's absolutely gorgeous. That Florida flamingo pink, love it. That's right up Shay's alley. I used to think it was a castle when I was a little kid, you know? Oh, beefy boys on patrol, baby. I'm digging it. Uh, they don't even know that I have a Harley too. They're over there going like, who's this nerd on the gold wing? Well, I'm just going to one of your brothers. Oh man, I ain't even looking over. I swear I'm, I'm not just a dad, I'm a cool dad. Oh man. Howdy. <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, I ain't quite there. This one sounds like a microwave. <laughs> You guys right safe. <laughs> See, Shay's got us covered. Later, y'all. I think they accepted me. I don't know. What do you guys think? The trade wins, baby. I've never stayed here before, but uh, my man Bert King from Bert Charlie Davidson said, come meet me out at the beach and let's have a dad venture. And when Bert King asks you to have a dad venture out on the beach, you don't say no. Dude, you think those beefy boys knew that uh, I was one of them? I was like, I have a Harley too. Dude, let me tell you what, man. They were oiled up, greasy, blinged out, and working for the weekend on them bikes, all right? <laughs> Lover boy, baby. It's good luck. Eat it. You're supposed to eat it for the best luck. It's like a four-leaf clover. Yeah. Cammy, eat it. Don't you want good luck? Cammy, eat that moth. That's not a moth. What is it? It's a beautiful butterfly. Oh, seven years of bad luck, you didn't eat it. Anyway, so uh, Shape's bike is leaking various fluids um, all, over Cam all over Cammy's bike, by the way. <laughs> Warn somebody first, all right? <laughs> anyway, we also went to the wrong hotel, so let's ride. She insisted, she was like, no, I'm fine on the coffee. I'll get it to the other place because the hotel that we're actually staying at is not too far. I come back, I was like, no, get it. What's the matter with you? I'll put it in the cup holder. Come I hear she's like the coffee sucks so bad <laughs> and they're already they're like can you guys move your bikes i'm like shut up this we're staying here and then all of a sudden i call gunner and bert and they're like yeah that's the wrong one so wrong anyway <laughs> it's not my fault it's god's fault for making me this way security guard's fault he just let us right in hey we made it sorry man <laughs> talk about the royal treatment baby gunner himself carting all this up cammy bringing up the rear that's right you can go ahead and sit in the back protecting our shit. <laughs> i'm gonna sit in this one because i get it all to myself <laughs> it feels like bush gardens it does yeah, where's your pith yourself. helmet the other guy had a pith helmet gunner okay. swing by wally world so we can get you one okay <laughs> as far as views go uh you know there might be a tree there but i'm not gonna complain this thing is pretty dope all right freaking wigs everywhere already number one baby <laughs> the place is just like festooned with wigs and other various devices no, wigs no, and <laughs> hey what's up Beth? cruise all here baby what's happening right now is we've what's left Bert unattended at a bar for about two hours while we get ready oh no <laughs> oh it's okay it's about no whatever amount of time it was he's had time to now. he's had time to prepare for us do a wheelie pussy trip. you fucking won't <laughs> <laughs> they better stop! We're coming! <laughs> Alright, well we managed to make it. Cami Bay's eyelashes are still attached. That's why she was facing backwards, by the way, if you were wondering. <laughs> Dude, I know all them hoe tricks, trust me. Excuse <laughs> you. I'm just kidding. I know all those beautiful, nice, beautiful girl tricks. Listen, if the men know that we can shapeshift, they're going to tell the church. Wait, what?
hear the beat boys in the background. All right, listen up. We're in Birchtown now, all right? <laughs> all them beefy boys rolling out. Five hours now. My soul, I want to get drunk and touch your hole and drift away. <laughs> Oh. All right. <laughs> Ricky T's awesome beers with Bert, and he's shown us how to use the right. e-bikes. Like I said, we're coming out here. We're on a little dadcation. We're all dads out here. We're having a good time. I got my two bratty kids. Dad <laughs> <laughs> but we're being responsible this time because, okay, like I said, I okay, stop more lying to I everybody. More responsible than usual. We're gonna ride bicycles out here. Is this how so, we start being responsible with a beer bottle for a? Uh, <laughs> yeah. The, well, the Just golf cart. The golf cart had. No. That's our job. <laughs> <laughs> so, far. so here's the deal. We came out here, we rode our motorcycles to the resort, but Bert King says, hey, I'm going to show you my town, because Bert actually lives out here, Inception. and he's going to show us his town on his bikes. That's one way to go through it, tour, sport, and boost, okay? Keep it in both. What I'm trying to tell you is you want to play with each one so you can get, feel the difference. Mm -hmm. It's always worth checking out. Are you acting like we're supposed to be really Where doing a video here? This is Bert's E-Bar Claw. Okay, where do you want to go first? And we're going to ride. We're going to Caddy's. Then we're going to Katiki. How fast is that? Uh, I got it up to 25.4. Highest speed so far today is 27.2, but it's early. I've had nothing to drink yet. Did you take a breathalyzer to confirm that? No. Let me tell you what, man. Caddy's on the beach, dude. This place is all right. We're up here accepting the sun's love, accepting its rays into our body. Cosmic energy flying across the universe for one thing and one thing only to be accepted into our skin, into our bodies, and shared with love, baby. Good. The mushrooms are the kicking in. The sun is a deadly laser. <laughs> Going to the next place, like we freaking locked the bikes up. Bert goes like, yo, it's around the corner. I'm not allowed to in front of ladies. Dude, I freaking wish I had gotten out on camera. Dude, we, we passed some big old beefy boys in short shorts. They look like an extra large Slim Jim over there. You know, this is a what kind of game? It's a drinking game. That's all I forgot, man. It's a race. That's the thing. Like we said, we're being a little responsible, but we ain't being responsible at all. All right, well, this one's regular soap, but I'll drink it. I never drank liquor drinks. Look at me go. Aww. Look what somebody said. Let's read that one right there. Josh and Cammy, babe. Best couple ever, dude. Look what else he said. Also, he said spit on me. <laughs> Dude, Bert brought out the special edition, baby. I'm not trying to sound cool right now. You know, I can tell we're in Birchtown because Bert has gotten recognized more than I have. No, I know what I'm saying. <laughs> it's fucking true. Like four people have come up and talked to Bert. Nobody's coming to me. My job. I've never been jealous in my life. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Go 
gorgeous. Oh my God. Work for the camera. Work for the camera. Come on. All right, Bert got me on the Zero One, which is called, uh, well, like the Zero One, whatever it is, the Heritage, whatever it is. But let me tell you, they call them all Zero Ones because this one's done up like the original 1903 Harley. Brown seat, white rims, the whole deal. And also, there's only 200 made. This is Bert's personal bike. Uh, he's let me ride it around and he goes, yo, be careful. Does everyone know where we're going next? I just rode the bad boy. You're next on that thing. No, I'm scared. <laughs> it's not that much. My wig is fine. <laughs> Are you even having fun if your wig didn't almost fall off? Oh, baby. Are you kidding me? I'll keep every secret you want me to, Cammy. They'll never know. I'm not about it. I'm going to pull my bangs out. I'm going to regret this later, aren't I? Not at all. Come on, I just want to write a poem about you, a haiku, all right? Just a little ditty. Can't take you anywhere, motherfucker. <laughs> Let me tell you what, right now, we went to Toasted Monkey, and they thought they were ordering a snack, but they the, the whole damn meal, baby. What's up, you practice that at home in the mirror, or what? <laughs> Why you when I eat? <laughs> I know, Shane, at least he did. <laughs> Almost got it. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not giving them that. I'm giving them what they really want. <laughs> no, no, no free feet, no free feet. shot right now in his town. Shaylisi and I have been recognized zero times. I can't believe this. This is like the fifth or sixth shot Bert's done that somebody's bought for him. Okay. <laughs> well, good for you. <laughs> wow. Wow. I Somebody wants a medal. Award. Who wants to give her a medal? Wow. Me and my wow. Number one. Cool. What does it look my like? Tower. Do we look like a bunch of slugs down here crawling around on the ground? <laughs> yeah, all the out of here. <laughs> she lost her chance with the Adams. He really said that. He really said that. With the Adams? That I wasted my chance with the Adams. Was he handsome? One of them was. One of the Adams. The if, the, if both their names were even Adam, I feel like they were saying that just to pick us up. Was he lost his your chance? The harsh light of day. Oh my gosh. What a freaking night last night. It was so much fun, and the amount that we can show you <laughs> is minimal. All right, bye, rumfish. It's been nice. The dadcation is officially over. Amongst the things that weren't film is climbing over six foot fences, trespassing in other hotel pools and hot tubs. <laughs> we almost got into a fight at Waffle House. We closed down a karaoke bar, ended up staying after hours with the staff 
half. The DJ was trying to take home Shay Lisi. Like, there, a lot happened last night, okay? And I didn't film almost any of it. It was a it was a roller coaster ride of emotions, if I do say so myself. That's it for now, St. Pete Beach. It's been fun, baby. <laughs> we better leave before they put us in beach jail. It only takes about one night for us to wear out our welcome. <laughs> There she goes. Uh, Cammy Bay knows how to make a quick getaway, all right? It's time to rock and roll. <laughs> and Shay Lisi, holy crap. Yeah, exactly. I kept knocking on the door saying, you guys, are you guys getting out of this damn hotel room yet? Not leaving. It's got a stove. It's got a kitchen. Okay, we're making a whole new life in here. All right, calm down, girls. Calm down. She's a speedy girl. All of a sudden, she's back in action. She was moving slow this morning, but there's nothing like a fast motorcycle to bring you back to life. <laughs> she's getting froggy over there. And she's got no tag on the bike. I just realized as soon as we left here, I forgot to put a tag on Cami Bay's bike, so I got to ride dirty over there. Well, come on, a black CBR 600F4i. Like, if that thing has a tag, it'd probably look more out of place than if it doesn't. All right, it's another day and someone else's <laughs> someone else's vehicle is in trouble. Well, not trouble, if you guys remember. I, I say if you guys remember, if you guys remember like literally, you know, probably like five or six minutes ago in the video, but a couple days ago for me now, <laughs> Shaylee sees a uh, brake master cylinder is leaking. And you know, that's not that big of a deal. I just need a 12 point to go ahead and tighten that up. But the bigger deal is that it's leaked all over the bike. So it's gonna take a little bit of a deep clean. And you know, with these sports like this, you do want to go over them every once in a while. Luckily, I've spent enough time on sketchy choppers with no front brake that, uh, you know, not being able to use the front brakes is really not a huge deal for me. It's not ideal. It's never ideal. But uh, the whole point of a chopper is that it's not ideal, right? Oh, I don't want Shaylee to have to put up with this. So we'll go ahead and get it fixed up. Uh, I'll put a rubber band on this thing, pressure test the system, make sure we don't have any leaks after it's all tightened up. As you guys are well aware, normally I'm just Mr. Frickin' put it on the highway, don't check anything. Let's send it ramming speed on down the road, baby. But firstly, when it comes to Shaylee I don't like to put her in that situation. And while she does know how to check on her own bike, she does rely on me to check on it as well. So I make sure I keep up with it. And when I'm doing that, that's usually on old Hondas. Now, an old Honda, you can definitely get away with really not checking too much and setting it, although you probably should. The thing about a rigid mount Sportster, so this is like pre-2003 Sportsters. After 2004, they went to a rubber mount engine, so there's a whole lot less vibrations. They look like they're vibrating like crazy because the engine shakes around in there like a FXR or a touring bike. You know, soft tails, even the old soft tails are still rigid mounted and the new soft tails are rigid mounted as well. But uh, the problem with these ones like this is they vibrate so much that you can't really get away with never checking stuff on a bike like this. On a pre-2003 Sportster, on older Harleys, everything like that, you do really kind of go, go through it every once in a while and just do a visual inspection. Make sure that things aren't loosening up. Make sure that everything's where it's supposed to be because stuff like bolts backing out, like that banjo bolt backing out. And I was like, it happens. It happens on these bikes. And it's it, especially prevalent in older Harleys. And even though the sports didn't really change, the engine didn't really change from 2003 to 2004, the frame and the rubber mounting what made a gigantic difference in how stuff backs out. But there's a lot of people that like that. Just like that feeling one with your machine, knowing that you have to go through it and make sure everything's okay and everything's tightened up and just kind of always touching every little part of it and going over it with your hands so you're familiar with every part of the motorcycle. You know, if you want like a bike that never breaks and is absolutely perfect, I totally understand that. But what you should understand is some people really, really like that almost like communing with their motorcycle with through the act of maintenance and uh, through the act of safety checks and everything like that. So I, I can definitely see the advantages of both. Uh, <laughs> and I definitely enjoy both. I enjoy bikes like this and I also enjoy bikes that you ain't gotta do nothing to. You know, why not have both, baby? Ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah, this definitely, definitely made a little bit of a mess. Luckily, Harley Davidson's use uh, synthetic brake fluid, so it's not actually bad for the paint. I mean, probably not something you want all over the bike, but yeah, it's not gonna really hurt anything. All right, that actually felt pretty tight, so let me see if we're still getting drops out of that. 
R. Since we are still getting drops out of that, that makes me think that maybe one of these washers is bad or isn't the right size or something. So let's go ahead and replace those. Rag on this, trying to avoid making um, too much more of a mess. I mean, it's already pretty much everywhere, but so hey, all me going on about how like communing with your motorcycle and making sure all the bolts are tight. And it was actually just a, uh, just a bad, uh, bad washer. These are kind have rubber on them, and that's what it came with. But you know, since that one went bad, I'm gonna go ahead and replace these like rubber-lined brush washers with some traditional brass ones, and uh, hopefully they don't they don't do that same thing. That would be nice. All right, let's go ahead. Now that I've introduced air to it, I'm gonna obviously have to bleed it. But let's go ahead and bleed this, and then we'll put a, put a hair tie, a rubber band, or a zip tie on this, and leave it overnight and see if we get any other leaks out of it. I'm actually com almost completely out of dot five brake fluid here to see how much is actually left in this. This thing because there's a whole lot of dot five brake fluid all over this motorcycle. Definitely don't think brake clean is on the uh, uh, recommended motorcycle uh, cleaning solutions list, but it is brake fluid, so I'm gonna clean it with this and then immediately clean it with some wash and wax after. And I'm not gonna soak it in brake clean. I'm just gonna try to get all this freaking nasty fluid off of here. Really, really a bummer, man. That stuff got everywhere. Also important just to get all this stuff off of here because it's kind of hard to start checking for leaks if it's already covered in brake fluid. I don't know if anybody else uses this stuff, but this super wax, which is a waterless cleaning wax, I almost, you know, every once in a while if a bike's really dirty or really disgusting, I'll, I'll use actual water to clean it. But the vast majority of the time, you know, if you keep your bikes kind of clean, uh, I don't clean the gold wings. If you keep them kind of clean, then you can just use this stuff to wash them. And I've used a lot of different ones. I don't know anything that's just special about this one, but I like this one the very best. Fair warning though, if you're washing your bike with this and it does rims, one of the reasons I like it is because it gets if you have a black powder coated engine where they sometimes look a little faded this shit just makes it look wet for days and days and days it looks really good in my opinion don't even know who max professional yeah don't even know who the company is i just personally like it but uh there's plenty of them out there i think the one i like the second best after this the, the harley brand one uh cleaning wax in, a, in an aerosol can like this is actually really good too really a big fan of that the thing i like about it is it works on everything i use it to clean the glass and the mirrors the freaking chrome and I'm gonna go over this with some chrome polish too, just to keep everything nice. But it works on freaking every single part of the bike, man. I like it. Now there's probably a lot of people who think I don't give a crap about keeping bikes clean. It's not true, I love a clean bike. There are just certain bikes I don't give a crap about keeping clean, like my gold wings, <laughs> my, my silver wing, things like that, where I'm like, yeah, that's not really this bike's intended purpose, you know? I really get this thing to keep it clean, but when you got a bike like this, like this one, my Rocket 3, I like to keep those bikes just absolutely as spotless as I can anyway, you know? It's uh, never really, you can really keep it perfect here in Florida with how much pollen we have, but this is why I love chrome, because with chrome, there's nowhere to hide. If your bike's not clean when you're covered in chrome like that, you're gonna be able to tell really quickly. So when it does look clean, it looks so clean. Oh, this guy right here is one of those uh, cheapo, you know, eBay special fairings that's kind of like modeled after the, the, the gauntlet fairing that Harley Davidson sold and it really is a big piece of crap. So it sucks because the price on this one is like so cheap. It's like 60 or $70 and a Harley Davidson actual one is like 250 or more. Really, really a stupid price difference, but man, this thing really is just kind of a piece of junk. I'm glad that we never took the time to paint it and I didn't paint it on purpose because I wanted to see how it held up before we spent money to actually paint it. So glad I didn't do that. I was remarking to you guys earlier, this is probably my favorite part about the Super Wax. Maybe there's other ones that are like this too, but see where this is just kind of looks dusty, like the black. Like when I clean the engine with this Super Wax, make sure it's not hot. Like, you know, we're not completely cold, but it's it's fine. You know, we're not completely cold, but it's, it's fine. I literally will just like, I freaking spray down the whole damn thing. You know, all the freak over it like that. And of course it cleans the chrome, we already knew that, but it just makes this black on the engine. It makes it look so, so much more black. It just brings it right back to life. It makes it look shiny and wet again. Then when you when you have a bike that's outside, like here in Florida, 
You know, even when you even when you keep it in the garage, you know, you ride them, they still spend enough time outside that this black starts to look kind of dusty. And I really like how this stuff makes it look. It's almost like uh, almost like tire wet, but for engines. I don't know that much about cleaning motorcycles. Trust me, I'm not an expert. Alex, uh, the diplomat, knows way more than I do. He's actually gonna start making some cleaning videos, but this is just how I like to do it. See back here, like on the starter, all this black back here. Some people will probably be like, yeah, it makes it attract dirt more. That might be true, but I think the trade-off of it looking that good, I think it's worth it. All right, well, that is looking a whole hell of a lot better. I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of chrome polish here too, but I'll tell you, it's the wheels, man. That's what always freaking does it, is cleaning those wheels. If you clean all the dust and road dirt, even when they don't look dirty, but you clean those wheels off, and it just, even if you don't clean anything else, it just changes the whole appearance of the motorcycle. Now, I've never used this stuff before. I just picked it up. I don't really have like a favorite chrome polish or anything like that, so, hey, whatever. I figured I'd give this stuff a whirl. Let's see how this stuff works. And it's just freaking chrome polish. It's kind of hard to, kind of hard to fuck up chrome polish, I think. There, yeah, that looks pretty good. Yeah, that, that looks great. Eh, whatever. Like I said, I, I got really no brand loyalty on, on chrome polish at all. I just figured this stuff was on the counter at Cycle Gear, so I figured I'd give it a whirl. It just makes everything look a lot deeper over here. And I don't know if you're gonna be able to tell the difference on camera, but you know, at least with my eye looking at them, I can tell a really big difference in the stuff that's polished over here on the other side that I haven't done yet. Anyway, I'm not gonna bore you guys with me polishing the entire motorcycle. All right, bike's all cleaned up. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave this sucker on it overnight and we'll check out that brake system again tomorrow morning. And make sure we're all safe for Shay here. It's been a little while and I'm still not seeing anything leaking out of there, but I'm still gonna leave it overnight anyway. I mean, since I rode this motorcycle up here, I get to ride another green Sportster home. Man, I really like this motorcycle. Oh, if you guys didn't know, this is the Dirtster right here. Old Dirty Bastard. The Raw Dog Special, my ADB Sportster that I'm going to be, uh, among other things, uh, attempting the Trans-American Trail with big emphasis on attempt. If you've been following my videos, you'll know that uh, I've got a whole separate other build series that I'm building this thing for, and uh, I'm just riding it home right now. But man, with this long travel suspension, this high seat, these drop down pegs, this thing is actually really, really fun to ride. And it's just set up so well for somebody who's taller, you know? I'm six foot one. I had other people on it. Like you could be, if you're like six five or six three, six like that, normally you try to get on a sports and your knees would be up in your chin with mid controls. The way this thing's set up, oh man, you'd be perfectly fine. <laughs> Here's the thing about me. I can have fun on pretty much anything that's got two wheels and a motor and even fun on things that got two wheels and no motor like those Harley e-bikes. There's still a good freaking time. Huge thanks to Burt King for <laughs> trusting this pack of assholes with a bunch of Harley e-bikes out on the beach. But I, yeah, I say more responsible, but you know, I feel like since we're being more responsible with the whole driving thing, we just like made up for it with the irresponsibility of how we were acting. But what, what can we say, man? We like to have our fun. We're just lucky to have a dealership like Burt's Barracuda that close to us with a dude like Burt who's at the dealership all the time. I see him give out his personal phone number to people, to customers all the time. You know, he might own the place, but he is there making sure everything gets run right, making sure all of his customers are happy. And it shows, man. It freaking shows, dude. He's a good dude. He loves to party. A man after my own heart. That's a, that's who I want to be when I grow up, all right? All right, y'all. I appreciate you hanging out on this one. We've got some big news coming up, man. This uh, this weekend, we caught, of course, uh, the normal Shade Tree Surgeon Sunday video coming out Sunday morning. We got a Shade Lisi live stream that Sunday night. And then Monday, 
we're actually going to do a special live stream with a guest we've never had on before. We're going to have on Natalie Cuomo, who's a motorcycle riding comedian from uh, from New York. Who's I've been, we've been kind of chatting back and forth online, and she's coming to Tampa. Natalie seems like a pretty badass chick, so we're going to do a show with her, and we're probably going to end up riding up to her show that she's doing here in Tampa too. But anyway, make sure you tune in for those two live streams, both the one on Sunday and the one on Monday, because we'll have some more info there. Not only are we going to be hanging out with Natalie and going to her show, but there is a lot of really cool stuff. Stuff coming up on the channel right now first off if you if you haven't been to the brap star store i did a small restock a bunch of people were asking me for more t-shirts and i did restock every single size not a ton of them so if you wanted a camp out shirt this is your last chance and they're going away forever <laughs> you know and maybe years from now maybe i'll re-release them but you know we got another camp out coming in less than six months so there'll be a different t-shirt for that one and this is the last time this design is going to see the light of day for a very very long time outside of that the weekend that natalie cuomo is coming down we've got the ratch and wrath market from kirby kelsey we got a couple other special guests coming into town and uh for that same weekend you know we're just gonna we're gonna call that weekend i'll have the dates down here that's gonna be like this uh kind of a kind of a blowout man i'm gonna be partying that whole weekend i want some people to come down for it so we got a couple tricks up our sleeves for that whole weekend trust me we got Got something really really cool in the works that i'll probably talk about for the first time on that live stream monday so make sure you tune into that and thanks for hanging out always a good time and uh, as i always say thanks for making wednesdays cool <laughs> till next time y'all keep it weird sunshine lollipops and Everything that's wonderful is what I feel